What's up y'all? This past week has been a pretty crazy week here in Florida and um, I just wanted to share some some reflection with you guys because it's, it's just been crazy. On Saturday, uh, I know the, the Northeast and uh, Canada was getting just bombed with a humongous snowstorm. Um, and us here in Florida, we're having our own trials as well. <laughs> and I realize that what we deal with is not the same thing that you deal with, but Floridians are not prepared for crazy weather. And uh, it was so nuts actually that I did an entire video on, on the weather because it was literally 37 degrees. Um, and you know, crops were freezing in the middle of the state. It got crazy. And it, while that may not sound like a big deal, um, it is because guys our water mains for the entire county run above ground in certain locations so if you think about that you start thinking about freezing temperatures and your water being above ground you got all kinds of problems but that's not what this video is about Hey everyone, Juan Alcala here with the True Living Group at EXP. And if this is your first time to the channel, we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. And if this is your first time to the channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we make a video just like this. And we're getting phone calls from people just like you from all over the country and North America who are considering making the move investing or maybe even picking up a second home here in the Tampa Bay area. However you got to get hold of us, whether it's phone, text message, email, heck, you can even direct message me on Instagram. Just know when it comes to making that move, we here at the True Living Group have got your back. Most recently, I've been having a lot of conversations with my friends and, and my professional uh, life as well and, you know, real estate agents in Ontario, Quebec and uh, Montreal specifically and then I have another friend up in Alberta and you know we meet every single day uh, every morning we meet as a, a community and, and and go through the challenges we're having and you know help each other's clients move back and forth and as you guys know you know if you're in Canada quite a few Canadians make their way down to Florida every year to the tune of about three million of you um, and six billion dollars is injected into the Florida economy every year because of my Canadian friends, which is awesome. And me, as a former Detroiter, you know, I grew up in that area. And um, when we were younger, um, you could hop over to Windsor and it was less than 30 minute drive from my house. I could be literally at the casinos in Windsor from, De from a suburb of Detroit in like 35 minutes. And at 19 years of age, we were allowed to go in pull the handles on the slot machine, have a beer and enjoy ourselves and then pop back over. Now, I'm a little bit older, things may have changed um, since then, but I remember those days and I also grew fond of Windsor specifically and just love the community. And then when I got older, I used to work for a, a trucking company uh, for a brief stint and we used to go over to Windsor and pick up salt. So I used to go over to the Mort Morton Salt Mines. Um, I did that at, almost every day for two years, which was um, a very interesting time in my life to say the least. Um, however, uh, the, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because, you know, there's so many Canadians that come to the area and you know I live in Pinellas County which is just west of Hillsborough County um, in the greater Tampa Bay area on the Gulf Coast in a little town called Indian Rocks Beach which is just seven miles south of Clearwater um, but we have a tremendous amount of Canadian friends who come down every single year who own second homes um, or have decided to, to, to call Florida their home permanently and most recently there's been a lot of political challenges um, there's been challenges because of the you know the pandemic that people just haven't agreed with and they've made the decision that they were going to cut ties with Canada and move down um, and listen this isn't to be political or not but there's a lot going on right one of my friends literally <laughs> told me as we were talking in the morning uh, he said the amount of overreach he goes it's it's we're calling it on terrible and I was like that's a very interesting statement for someone to make and let me tell you this is somebody who loves his country 
and is a outstanding real estate professional. And I was blown away when I heard that. So it got me thinking like, okay, well, what else is going on that, that we don't necessarily know here in America? You know, and, and why, you know, are, are so many Canadians choosing to, to make the leap? But why are other people just deciding as well? And, you know, I've done an entire series of videos recently on people moving from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, you know, Massachusetts. We've done California, uh, Washington, Oregon. I mean, the list goes on and on of people who are, you know, relocating to the Tampa Bay area in Florida specifically, calling this their new home because of the freedoms that they, they, they incur, number one. And number two, because it... From a tax perspective and an income perspective, Florida is very friendly. Okay, the cost of living typically is lower here than other coastal regions, number one. We're actually just a little bit below the national average in the United States as well. Um, Tampa specifically is about 1% lower than the national average in terms of cost of living. Uh, I do expect that number to increase this year. Um, we also expect Tampa to be the hottest real estate market in the country. And, um, you know, but I'm sharing this with you because at, when, we, when, we lived, when we moved here originally, we had, didn't recognize that there was as many Canadians that lived here or, you know, spend the winters here as there are. And, you know, being from Detroit, I was called a snowbird when we started coming down. And, you know, if you come from the north um, to Florida in the winter, they call you a snowbird, right? And uh, if, if you're, you know, a retiree, they call you a, a Q-tip or a blue hair, which makes me, you know, <laughs> that's quite the endearing term, right? Um, however, that's just what it's called. You know, you learn what the locals say, you, you, get, you get a feel for these things. But, you know, when I came to uh, Florida originally, and we've discussed this with you guys before we shared this story, that we tried to move to Dunedin. And Dunedin um, is a town, it's about 30 minutes north of us. It's really only... It's just north of Clearwater, so we're talking about like eight and a half miles, but um, the, the, the roads take forever to get anywhere here. Um, our lights are a little bit longer, uh, there's a little bit more traffic, and people just tend to drive really bad in Florida. And, and that's my personal observation, and also when you see the stats, you can see it too. So, you know, there's a bunch of crazy drivers here, and I don't know if it's because there's it's so diverse and people come from all over the country and the world and they just feel like they can drive however they want, but there's it, definitely going on here. But the thing that, that happened in Dunedin is what I didn't recognize when we first you know came down where you're trying to find a place in Dunedin there was that the Toronto Blue Jays play you know their spring training happens in Dunedin and it's a great little coastal town if you've never seen our Dunedin video check that out I'll put it up in the corner over here wherever, wherever the editor is going to put it um, great video on Dunedin we love Dunedin um, and we tried to get there you know, we tried to buy a home there. We couldn't make it work. The market wasn't nearly as hot as it is now, but we just couldn't get our offers accepted. Found this great place here. As you can tell, we're completely spoiled rotten. Um, you know, all brick home, I'm sorry, all block home, uh, you know, four bedrooms, two, two baths at the split floor plan, which is, means our master's on one side and the three other bedrooms on the other side. And, and we got this pool, y'all, and all my wife wanted was to be within 15 minutes of the water, meaning the beach, the Gulf beaches, and uh, have a pool in her backyard. And, and we ended up being so blessed uh, with, with where we are. Um, and that's what I love about the, the community here. And now I know why so many Canadians, are, they come down here. Yeah, it's not just about, you know, the fact that there's sunshine. I mean, today is gorgeous, right? We started telling the story by it was, you know, 37 degrees on Saturday morning, which is insanity, right? And it was cold for five days. I wore pants. Crimea River, I know. But in Florida, we're not used to that, y'all, right? And Tampa is located, you know, centrally in the state. And we're kind of like the last frontier, meaning that like, we typically don't see real cool temperatures. We'll get about 10 days that are, you know, 50 or below um, every single year. But on average, you know, our low temperatures are in the 50s. You know, in January, our average temperature is 70 degrees. So we can't have those dips. And last week was crazy. But coming down here, you know, and going from, you know, that 37 degrees on Saturday, and today is Tuesday when I'm shooting this video with y'all. Sorry, Wednesday. Today is Wednesday when I'm shooting this video with y'all. It is now 76 degrees. The sun is shining. You can hear the breeze behind me. If you can't, it's blowing. You probably see it in the palm trees, right? It's incredible. And one of the reasons I think so many Canadians make the decision to make the jump to Florida is the tax benefits, right? We don't have a personal income tax here. Now, I don't understand the tax structures behind Canada or how, you know, your government insurance works or any of those things, right? I don't live there. I don't have any experience with it. Um, but what, one of the things I do know is it's just not Canadians coming down. You know, you guys are watching my videos and get calls from all over the country in North America. Um, 
but people are asking, you know, and, and we don't have a personal income tax here. Y'all, and if you make any real money, you know, if you make a good living wage, that can be a pretty big benefit. You know, I've got people coming from New York who are paying 10.9% on their personal income tax. I'm not even talking about their property taxes. 10.9%, right? If you made $100,000, that's almost 11 grand back in your pocket, right? On a, on a an average mortgage of, of the, the median house house price right now is right around $400,000. 410 is what they closed that last week. Uh, principal and interest alone are right around $1,800 on that property, okay? $1,800. If you were able to save $11,000, you're talking almost like seven months of mortgage payments, right? It's like just over six. That's incredible. That's a ton, a ton of savings. Now, I don't know which tax rate is in, in Canada. Typically, I look these things up, but I, I, they're variable, and, and I don't want to speak to an entire country. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but you know what you pay on those taxes. Now, can you can, do you own a business? Are you able to, to relocate? Can you take the tax benefits? I don't know what those things are for you, but I just know that they exist. Our property taxes are significantly lower than of a lot of other coastal regions, um, and they're lower than they were back for me back home in Detroit. Um, now, you might live in rural Mississippi, and you've got extremely low taxes, or rural Michigan, and you've got extremely low taxes, and we might be twice as much as you were there. But on average, what, we, what I see here is right a little over 1% of the purchase price is what I'm typically seeing on the other side. That's not how the taxes get, get formulated, but that's on average, if you had to put it in your mind, like, okay, if I buy a $500,000 house, you know, in the Tampa area, I'm probably gonna be paying somewhere in that 5,000 to $6,000 range in taxes. That's what I see. And y'all, that's not, a, you might be somewhere where, you know, you're paying $15,000 a year, right? So what a, what a benefit that would be to you as well. So it's one of the big reasons why we see people moving to the state, whether it's from Canada or New York or California or wherever is, you know, if they can take a $700,000 average price, move it to a $400,000 average price, uh, re reduce their, their personal income tax liability, that already gets you going in a really good direction. And then you add on the lifestyle on top of that, man, it is just awesome. It's not just my friends in, in Canada there. And if you're watching from, you know, from anywhere in Canada, I just want to say hello because, again, I, the culture of, of the Canadians, I think, is something that I've really grown, grown fond of, especially having, you know, my friends and, and, and peers that, that live in the area. And just I love how patriotic they are. I love how, how much they care about how people react and respond to each other and they interact with each other. I think that that's fascinating. And I, what's really cool is they've brought that culture to Florida. And it, we're a melting pot here, right? We've got people from the West Coast, people from the North, true Southerners, um, true Floridians. There aren't very many, I gotta be honest with you. Um, but that's, it makes it very diverse and it also helps things get better, right? And you know, what I love about the Gulf Coast beaches and the Gulf Coast area in Tampa specifically is is a very laid back lifestyle. There's a huge difference between uh, Miami, who doesn't even believe that they're, <laughs> if you go to Miami, they don't believe they're part of Florida, y'all. I'm not kidding, right? Look it up, real life. Um, they're, they're convinced that, you know, Miami is, is not part of Florida, but it's busy. And it's uh, it, it's a fast pace, and um, it is very. It reminds me a lot of Chicago, New York, and Detroit, where like everything was on the go, 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 go all the time. Um, but also, the thing I loved about Detroit and the Midwest is there was still this communal vibe to it, um, and a little bit laid back. When it was time to work, you worked hard, and when it was time to chill, you chilled hard. Okay, and um, unlike places like New York and Chicago, where where they're always on. All right. I love Chicago, y'all. We used to go to Chicago all the time. I love the city, but I went there for a reason, right? Because I wanted to be on and, and, and go enjoy the city and the nightlife and be busy for the entire weekend. But when I got back, I needed a break, right? And the thing that has happened here in Tampa and why I love this community so much, the Tampa Bay area, is it is a very laid back lifestyle, right? So, you know, if that's something that interests you, this is a great place to look Okay, we still get some cool nights. It's not South Florida like Key West where, you know, you don't typically see temperatures go under 70 degrees hardly ever. Now, again, this cold spell did dig deep and it definitely hit some of South Florida as well. 
but it's also a very laid back lifestyle. So, you know, I love sharing that with people because they ask, like, hey, what's the biggest difference, you know? And, and my favorite, my, I, I came up with this and I don't remember why, I, you know, I don't remember if I heard it from somebody or whatever, but it stuck with me. And, you know, people come down in our first year and they're like, hey, what's the biggest difference between, you know, living here in Florida and, you know, living up north? And I, and I say the same thing every time. You don't have to shovel sunshine, right? You just don't. And um, the gray that stays around forever, we don't have that. And when it's gloomy here for two or three days in a row, you notice, right? Unlike when we were back home and it would, if we would, there would be months, y'all, when we would see the sun like literally five to eight times. And I'm not talking about prolonged, like extended period of times. I'm talking about like it would pop out behind the clouds and you have, you know, a couple hours or occasionally you get a full day. It's not all gloom and doom, but it is pretty rough in the winters up there. And if you're sitting up north right now watching this and you've got a foot of snow outside, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> or if you live anywhere, um, you know, east of the Great Lakes, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's cold, windy, gray, and it kicks your butt. And when that first warm day in the spring comes around, and I'm talking about like 46 degrees, everybody's got their top down. They're like, yeah, but you know, they're so excited. That's real life, you know. But it got, you know, again, I, we've been having these conversations. And, and even this past week, I think it was on Monday, um, I, don't quote me on the date, but there was this humongous protest in Quebec um, where truck drivers literally lined the streets along with tens of thousands, it looked like hundreds of thousands of people, y'all, um, protesting the mandates that are going on there um, for, for, for truck drivers and for, uh, for freight, you know, because they don't want to be vaccinated or they do or they don't want to be forced to. And um, so, you know, I hear this term from my friend, you know, and, and sorry, I know I'm excited, tangent there, but like I heard this term from my friend, he says, on terrible. And they're just talking about how hard it's become and, you know, to move back and forth. And, you know, and then I started looking at the numbers for Florida. And that's how we got to those, you know, six billion dollars a year is spent in Florida from Canadians who come down for the winter alone, you know. And how much has that impact, impacted our local economy? Well, I can see it in the condos. Some of the condos still have the the hurricane shutters down, right? You know, when they would normally be up and they would be full of people and they'd be vibrant and our beaches aren't nearly as full as they have been. Now that's both a blessing and a curse, right? The economy is impacted a little bit, but the weird thing is, is our unemployment, the we just got the numbers back this week, is lower than it was pre-pandemic, which is awesome for the local economy. So we're actually booming here, which is great. But the thing that we're not seeing as much is that the, the Canadian travel now, over the last you know three to five months i've noticed more of that and i've got other friends who have been able to make the travel we saw some of our canadian friends in october when we did a real estate event they were able to make the trip down that's my puppy by the way you probably you probably saw her climb by um stella what are you doing baby um you know they were able to come down in october and that's for some of them was the first time traveling out of the country in over 18 months right so it was an exciting time to be together with those guys but you know some more have come back down this week so you're starting to see that travel loosen up but you know it i i, I share this with you guys because i just want to you know i'm always trying to share my heart and like what i experienced with the area and you know this is our third we're going into our fourth year we just celebrated our third year living in in tampa in this house specifically and it's just been such a blessing to our family and we don't regret it we've done nothing but loved right moving to the area here it's just been wonderful and you know if you're considering you know relocating or moving to the tampa bay area you know feel free to give us a call text message email um, you can even dm me on instagram however you got to get hold of me when it comes to moving to the tampa bay area or relocating or investing in the area maybe you're looking for that second home maybe you're coming down from canada or new york or wherever it is just know that my team at the true living group has got your back we'd be more than happy to help you make that move um, and if you've got any questions or comments you know please or questions put them in the comments below i love to answer those questions you know we give vlog tours of, of, of specific areas in the city by request actually and then I you know I usually tour the neighborhoods and the best cities and share those with you guys if you've never been to the channel before check those out because they're super helpful we got a full video on Dunedin like we were talking about before if you're a Blue Jays fan um, 
I'm from Detroit, y'all. I'm a Tiger, but they play over in Lakeland. You've got the Phillies that play in the area, uh, the Yankees play in the area, um, the, the Orioles play in Sarasota. I mean, this is just such a wonderful area to come, you know, have a second home, get an investment property, whatever it is. Um, this is just a wonderful spot to come check out. And hey, I'd be more than happy to help you do that. But again, you got any questions, comments, just put them below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.